segment with Dr. Francis Boyle. His uh, new book is out, Tackling America's Toughest Questions, Alternative Media Interviews. Give him to briefly tell you about that in a few minutes before he goes. But um, on the subject of the Chicago Business School, where all these people come from, and you went to school with all these individuals, you were telling me during the break, about how this really all goes back to the Rockefellers. Then I briefly wanted to talk about government-sponsored terror. I ran on record having the United States stage terror attacks inside of it. And I guess the American people are ignorant of that or comfortable with it. Uh, and what an attack on Iran will cause. Yeah, uh, well, if the United States either itself or with Israel or Israel unilaterally attacks Iran, um, you'll see the entire... Middle East blow up everywhere from um, uh, Gaza, and, and by the way, a good deal of the Middle East is already in flame now. Uh, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. And notice um, Obama uh, put the well-known neocon uh, Richard Holbrook in charge of uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan, and Holbrook has now spread the. Um, Afghanistan war into Pakistan, deliberately and on purpose, uh, has created a total humanitarian catastrophe for two million completely innocent uh, Pakistanis and is destabilizing uh, Pakistan, very much like what was done uh, with Iraq. Uh, Iraq has been destabilized, effectively carved up into three pieces, uh, and neutralized. Um, so you have a war in Iraq, Afghanistan, um, Pakistan already. Uh, if Iran is attacked, the entire Persian Gulf everywhere will blow up, uh, at least from uh, Egypt over to India. This, this whole area will become a uh, war zone. And you recall when um, President Bush was in power, at that time President Putin, the KGB agent, uh, went over to Iran and said uh, he did not believe Iran was developing nuclear weapons. Whereupon President Bush got up and publicly threatened World War III uh, over Iran's nuclear program, that everyone agrees they're not, not developing nuclear weapons. But he threatened World War III. Now, clearly, uh, Iran... Uh, is not capable of waging World War III. That threat was directed at then-President Putin. And then we saying, saw 888. We saw that sneak attack. Saying, right, that we, uh, we the United States, uh, are prepared to take over Iran and risk uh, World War III uh, with you, Russia, and you better understand that. Uh, just Soon thereafter, then, um, uh, President Putin gave a press conference uh, responding uh, to the proposal to deploy these ABM systems in Europe, which, by the way, uh, yesterday Obama indicated under McFaul's influence they still were not going to give up. Um, President Putin said, you know, if you keep these things in Europe, you are risking another Cuban Missile Crisis. And, you know, I lived through the Cuban Missile Crisis. I remember it uh, quite well. Uh, the world came, you know, within a hairbreadth uh, of, of destruction. So that is what we right now are facing uh, under Obama with these characters that uh, he has uh, in power uh, surrounding him. And, of course, if, if the whole Middle East blows up and there are also, uh, you know, terrorist attacks launched by Iran um, uh, in Europe, uh, you'll have the immediate uh, imposition of, of a, a de jure police state here in America. And remember... And I, I guarantee you they're probably going to try to come right. arrest you, right? They're, I mean, they're going to try to come arrest you. Yeah, I'm on the terrorist watch list. That's correct. I'm on a list of uh, 4,000 uh, select people... Uh, at the top of the CIA FBI uh, terrorist watch list. And yes, the CIA has set off offices all over the country. They've come in here, me, to interrogate me, 
and try to get me to become an informant on my Arab and Muslim clients, which I refused to do. Uh, it would have violated my ethical obligations as an attorney and their constitutional rights. So they put me on this uh, terrorist watch list. And the CIA so, is not supposed to be operating domestically, and they're putting local army in every major police department now and putting it in the news. I mean, they right. are can, really getting ready. They're, they're brazen uh, about this. And then you've already mentioned uh, uh, coordinating this with NORTHCOM. So... What, and I believe it was Cheney who said that, you know, if, if there's a terrorist attack, he'll, he'll blame it on Iran. Um, and, uh, you know, it was Tommy Franks uh, who said uh, uh, after 9-11, uh, General Tommy Franks, America is just one terrorist attack away uh, from uh, a military state. You know, he said that. And I think he knew what he was talking about, uh, a military takeover of the country. He said the American people uh, will demand it. So it would be, you know, even worse than, say, what we saw in World War II, uh, internment of uh, Japanese-American citizens and, and things of that nature. Um, you know, it, it, it would be very serious. So it's the perfect takeover. They get to move their chess pieces around the world, destabilize the planet, use proxy states, kamikazes, uh, bombard other nations from the air, and have domestic police state crackdowns in Airstrip One England and the United States, and put out DHS lists leaking liberals, conservatives, gun owners, openly say Homeland Brigade, openly turn the United States into a total police state, my God, they are really doing it. Do you think they'll get away with it? I mean, are these guys so bold? Is there no end? Is the public mesmerized by Michael Jackson? Will America completely descend into total military rule? Well, I'm afraid they've been mesmerized by uh, Barack Obama. Uh, you know, you have to look at what Obama and his henchmen and his henchwomen are doing here and not what Obama is saying. He's uh, a far smoother... Uh, political character than uh, Bush was. You know, at least Bush, uh, you know, pretty much said what he meant, meant what he said, and, you know, you could you could really see it. Whereas with Obama, uh, uh, the rhetoric, the propaganda, the press conferences, very smooth, very reassuring, uh, but the policies, as you point out, are just continuing and in some extent uh, accelerating. Even Senator McCain in the campaign, when Obama said that he w he was going to launch a tax on Pakistan, Senator McCain, to his credit, criticized Obama and said he, he was not going to do that. Um, and you have this massive escalation uh, in Afghanistan now, no authorization from the U.N. Security Council, no authorization from the United States Congress as required by the uh, uh, War Powers Resolution, and then expanding the war uh, into Pakistan, very reminiscent of um, uh, the uh, massive escalation into Vietnam. Indeed, uh, today they, you know, they admitted, well, yeah, we really need about uh, at least a hundred thousand uh, American troops in Afghanistan. Well, the Soviets had a hundred thousand troops uh, in Afghanistan, and they still lost. Um, so, um, you know, this is very dangerous, and, and like Nixon, then spreading the. Um, uh, Vietnam War to Cambodia, uh, setting off a coup d'etat there, uh, resulting in the Khmer Rouge coming to power in genocide. Uh, and Which way, Brzezinski brags he supported, and then that goes back to the Rockefellers again. In closing, then, Dr. Boyle, does it look 60-40, 60% chance they're going to go ahead and launch World War Three? I mean, what do we do to put pressure on them? Is there any hope, or is it just all the fad of Obama, and that's the end of it, and... That's the end of the republic. Well, I think, it, you know, it really is up, up to you and me and the American citizens. Most American people here don't want war against Iran. We don't want uh, World War III. Um, and we're going to have to get organized and uh, uh, stop these people. I also noticed, uh, even in the Pentagon, there, the uh, Admiral uh, Mullen, in response to the Biden threat uh, against Iran, uh, said that, you know, an attack on Iran would be a bad idea. So, I, you know, I think, you know, yeah. in their heart of hearts, the professional military people well, realize this would be insane. But, hey, the war against Iraq was insane, too. Well, uh, well that goes back to Fox Fallon. Huh? 
Bobby. Uh, I and mean, that goes back to Fox Fallon, uh, Fallon. He didn't want to attack Iran and resigned over that. So, so Bush I'm, fired him. That's pretty clear. <laughs> Bush got rid of him and forced forced uh, Admiral Fallon out because he was going public uh, with the Bush neocon plans to uh, attack Iran. And Admiral Fallon did the best he could to blow the whistle and stop it, to, I think, his great credit. Now, so I that's the silver lining. Admiral Fallon. So, so that's the silver lining in this cloud, is that the neocons, one, and now the neocons, two, reincarnated with the slicker, kind of new order closer, Barack Obama, they're almost giving orders like Hitler to armies that don't exist, or will they just go ahead and give the order and it's going to be followed? 